Hello there. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally here. The video to round out the trifecta of icebergs. Today, we are going to be going over the Disney iceberg created by me. I figured that for this one, I would try my hand at making an iceberg chart. I took a lot of inspiration from other iceberg charts I found on the internet, which will all be linked in the description, as well as my own personal knowledge of some of these topics. Now keep in mind, this is not only a Disney Channel iceberg, but is a Disney as a whole iceberg, which includes the parks, the company, the movies, and the television channel sprinkled in. I will also link this iceberg chart that I have made in the description as well. So, without further ado, this is the explanation of my own Disney iceberg. Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse is the main mascot of the Walt Disney Company. He is arguably the most recognizable cartoon character of all time. He is a mouse who wears red pants with yellow shoes. Not much else to say. Steamboat Willie This is the third short created featuring Mickey Mouse, but was his first breakout hit, released in 1928. The short featured Mickey Mouse known as Steamboat Willie. The short was also noticeable as it was one of the first animated shorts to use synchronized sound. Plain Crazy Plain Crazy, made in 1928 before Steamboat Willie, was originally the first short to feature Mickey Mouse and was a silent film. However, after Steamboat Willie, the short was reworked with sound and was released in 1929 as the fourth Mickey Mouse short. Splash Mountain Splash Mountain is a log flume ride based off of the 1946 Disney film, Song of the South. The ride was opened in 1989 in Disneyland and 1992 in Magic Kingdom. The ride was immensely popular up until its recent closure in January of 2023. The reason for its closure was due to the film it was based off of, Song of the South, which has been heavily criticized for its portrayal of racial stereotypes. The ride is rescheduled to be open in 2024 as Tiana's Bayou Adventure, based off of the 2014 film Princess and the Frog. Disney Channel Launching in 1983 as a premium cable network, the Disney Channel was Disney's attempt into getting themselves into the booming television market. After the channel became extremely popular, the channel started to transition into a basic cable network in the early 1990s before transitioning fully in 1996. Disney Channel Original Movies Beginning in 1997, Disney Channel would produce their own made-for-TV movies to show on their channel. Some of these movies include Halloween Town, The Cheetah Girls, High School Musical, Camp Rock, Lemonade Mouth, and Teen Beach Movie. Walt's Final Ride The final ride that Walt Disney had a hand in production in was the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Fast Pass In the mid-1990s, Disney executive Bruce Laval designed a concept of a virtual queue, a system in which people would make a reservation to experience an attraction and then would be able to do other things before their reservation time. This concept would come to be known as Fast Pass. In 1999, FastPass would launch at several different attractions at Disney World. The system was very popular and continues to be used to this day, although under several different names. Disneyland TV Show The first part of the Disney Anthology series, Walt Disney's Disneyland, was a series that aired on ABC between 1954 and 1958. The show would give teasers to the at the time unbuilt Disneyland Park in Anaheim, California. After the park opened in 1955, the show acted more as advertisement for the park. The Muppets Disney purchased the rights to Jim Henson's Muppet characters in 2004 following the death of Jim Henson in 1990. This allowed Disney to better incorporate the Muppet characters into their theme parks, however, excluded the Sesame Street Muppets. Fox Acquisition 
In March of 2019, Disney acquired the massive movie and television company 20th Century Studios for $71.3 billion. This gave Disney ownership of all of 20th Century Fox's film and television library. Disney Junior Disney Junior is the preschool sister television channel to Disney Channel. Disney Junior originally was a morning weekday block on Disney Channel, but was then upgraded to a full-on channel in 2012. The block used to be called Playhouse Disney until being changed to Disney Junior in 2011. Wand IDs The Wand IDs are a group of station ID bumpers for the Disney Channel. The bumpers would start with a Disney actor or actress, telling the viewer who they are and what show they are from, and then telling them that they're watching the Disney Channel. The star would then draw the logo of the channel before ending. Kingdom Hearts Kingdom Hearts is a video game series developed by Square Enix, the creators of the Final Fantasy series. The series features some of Disney's most popular characters, including Goofy, Donald, and Mickey. There are currently 17 games total in the series, with two more underway. Toontown Online Toontown Online was an MMORPG developed by Disney's virtual reality studio and Shell Games in 2003. The game had the players play as characters known as Toons, which are colorful animals teaming up to take down COGS, robots that are obsessed with business. The game also had non-combat activities such as parties, kart racing, trolley games, fishing, and golfing. The game also featured Disney characters in each land, with each land being named after the character. The game was shut down in 2013, however a fan-made revival of the game named Toontown Rewritten was created in 2014 and is still running to this day. Club Penguin Club Penguin was an MMO created in 2005 by New Horizon Interactive. The game had you play as penguins, interacting with other penguins. The game ran on Adobe Flash until the game closed in 2017. Phantasmic Phantasmic is the nightly fireworks show at Disneyland and Hollywood Studios. The show started in 1992 at Disneyland and 1998 at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The show follows Mickey and his journey into imagination. No pun intended. Towards the end of the show, he fights Maleficent and prevails. The show had a short run at Tokyo Disney Sea from 2011 to 2020, where the show had a different plot. However, the Disneyland and Disney World shows continue to this day. Radio Disney Radio Disney was the official radio station for Disney. The station started in 1996 and broadcasted music targeted towards kids and preteens, especially teen idols, ones that were already signed with Disney. Radio Disney also held the Radio Disney Music Awards, which was a music show that would celebrate the best of the station. The show lasted from 2001 to 2019, and the station closed shortly after in early 2021. Silly Symphonies Silly Symphonies was a series of 75 animated shorts created by Walt Disney from 1929 to 1939. These shorts used music as main focal points and would complement certain points of the short. These were immensely popular and were a breakout point for Disney into mainstream popularity. Song of the South Song of the South is a 1946 live action film created by Disney. The film was based off of the Uncle Remus stories from writer Joel Chandler Harris. The film was critically acclaimed at the time, but more recently has gained a cult hatred as the film painted slavery as something positive. The film has not been re-released by Disney or added to Disney+. Plus. Disney DVD If you grew up in the 2000s, there's a good chance that when you brought a Disney DVD, that this screen would come up. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was a character created by Disney in 1926, predating Mickey Mouse. He would star in 190 shorts between 1926 and 1938 before Disney stopped making Oswald shorts. Oswald is one of the main characters in the epic Mickey video game series as well. Disneyland Fun 
Disneyland Fun is a half hour special created in 1990 to coincide with the Disneyland 35th anniversary. The special was created as a part of the Disney Sing Along Songs series. The special is about a group of children enjoying a day at Disneyland with songs to go with it. The special had several songs created specifically for it, like Walking Right Down Main Street USA and Making Memories, and also included songs from Disney films like Whistle While You Work and Zippity Doo Dah. The special featured some of Disney's best voice actors, including Bill Farmer, Jim Cummings, and the late Wayne Allwine as Mickey. Kingdom of the Sun Kingdom of the Sun was a film that was slated to be released in 2000. The film supposedly followed the plot of the Mark Twain story, The Prince and the Pauper. The film was cancelled and turned into The Emperor's New Groove. Gigantic Gigantic was a film that was set to be Disney's 59th animated film. The film was announced by Toy Story director John Lasseter at the D23 Expo in 2015, slated for a 2019 release. The film was going to be a retelling of the Jack and the Beanstalk tale. However, the date got pushed back to 2020, and then in 2017, the film was announced to be cancelled. Dumbo 2 Dumbo 2 was a direct video sequel to Dumbo that was supposed to be released in 2001. The film would have followed Dumbo and his friends getting separated in New York City. The film was dragged on for the next five years before being cancelled in 2006. Disney Channel Theme over the years, it has been a big mystery on who wrote the theme song of the Disney Channel, which had appeared on countless bumpers for the network beginning in the late 1990s. In November of 2022, documentarian Kevin Perger released a documentary exploring the mystery behind the theme song. I don't want to spoil the details of it, I just suggest you watch it for yourself. Videopolis In June of 1985, Disney opened a teen nightclub named Videopolis. The stage, which has since been renamed to the Fantasyland Theater, showed the popular music videos of that time while the teens danced. Despite the club being popular, the event was quite a hefty price to get in, as you needed to purchase a ticket to the park. Later on, they allowed teens to buy passes for Videopolis only. The hefty price, coupled with the rival nightclub, Cloud9 and Knott's Berry Farm, which was cheaper, and a string of fights and violence taking place in and around the park, the club was closed in 1995. Pleasure Island Pleasure Island was an expansion to the then-named Downtown Disney Shopping District in Buena Vista, Florida. The island hosted many different nightclubs and bars that were geared towards an older audience. The island opened in May of 1989 and closed in September of 2008. Halix Halix was a band that played during the summer of 1981 at the Disneyland Space Stage in Tomorrowland. The band was dissolved in September of 1981 after a record deal fell through and the band broke up. Journey into Imagination Journey into Imagination was a ride that opened in Epcot in 1983. The ride followed the writers, quote, learning that imagination is the key to unlocking the wonders of the world. The ride went through several different iterations, including the very unpopular Journey Into Your Imagination from 1999 to 2001, and the current iteration, Journey Into Imagination with Figment, which opened in 2002. Horizons Horizons was a dark ride that was in Epcot from 1983 to 1999. The attraction dealt with the concept of the future and futuristic towns. The ride was very popular up until its closure in 1999 and was replaced with its current holder, Mission Space. Marvel and Lucas Films In August of 2009, Disney acquired Marvel Comics for $4 billion. In December of 2012, Disney acquired Lucas Films for $5.05 billion. These two acquisitions gave Disney complete control over all of Marvel's characters in the Star Wars franchise. Disney XD In 2009, Disney launched Disney XD, a premium cable channel that targeted children ages 6 to 11 and preteens as well. The network replaced the Toon Disney Channel. 
At first, the channel had original content like Kick Butowski, Tron Uprising, and Randy Cunningham Knife Grade Ninja. However, the channel has been on a steady and slow decline, now being used as a dumping ground for shows no longer wanted on the main network, similar to how Cartoon Network treats Boomerang nowadays. And a lot of countries have started to close their international Disney XD channels. Playhouse Disney Playhouse Disney was the former name of Disney Junior. This was a preschool block that would air weekday mornings and featured shows geared towards preschool children. The block lasted from 1997 until 2011, when it became Disney Junior. Disney Channel Logos Disney Channel has gone through several logo changes in its history, the most notable changes happening in 1997, 2002, and 2014. Michael Eisner Michael Eisner is the former chairman of the Walt Disney Company. He was appointed in 1984 after serving as the president of Paramount. However, towards the end of his tenure, certain business decisions forced him out of his position and he was surpassed by ABC executive Bob Iger. Where's My Water Where's My Water is a mobile puzzle game created by Disney Interactive in 2011. The game focused on the player getting water to Swampy's bath so he can bathe himself. The game has spawned several sequels and spin-offs. Disney Vault The Disney Vault refers to a business practice that Disney uses. What they would do is release a film into theaters, and then they would place it in the Disney Vault until its next re-release into theaters, as Disney saw that as the main way to make money. However, once VHS came around, they started to toy around with making films available to own after it came out in theaters, and that practice continues to this day. Utilidors the Utilidors is a combination of tunnels that run underneath Disney World's Magic Kingdom. The tunnels each have exits to different lands in the park. The Utilidors are mostly used for storage and maintenance equipment, but have also been used for costume characters to get from one place to another without traveling on land as to not break the illusion. Real Bones on Pirates of the Caribbean this is a popular urban legend that real human bones were used for the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. This actually is true, as the bones used on the ride when it first opened were donated from the UCLA Medical Center, as, surprisingly, fake bones were, at the time, a lot more expensive to use. Nowadays, the bones have been changed out for fake bones. Let's go to Disneyland Paris. Let's Go to Disneyland Paris, like Disneyland Fun, is a half-hour special created for the Disney sing-along song series. The special is pretty much the same, except the special is, of course, filmed at Disneyland Paris, and certain songs are replaced. The Great Outdoors is replaced with How Do You Do and Shake Hands, and the Unbirthday song. Making Memories is replaced with Pico's Bill. Roger Rabbit 2 Roger Rabbit 2 The Toon Platoon was set to be a prequel to the 1988 film Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The film was going to see Roger Rabbit setting out to find his real family. The film was going to be set between 1941 and 1943 during World War II. The film never came to be and ultimately fell apart after Steven Spielberg refused to sign on due to the film's cartoonish depiction of Nazis. Where the Wild Things Are this was going to be an animated adaptation of the 1963 book of the same name. The film was set to be directed by John Lasseter, however the film was cancelled as it was going to be too expensive to make. Treasure Planet 2 Treasure Planet 2 was going to be a sequel to the 2002 film Treasure Planet. The film would have involved Jim Hawkins going to the Royal Interstellar Academy. The film was cancelled after the first movie flopped in theaters. Original Disney Channel Programming Some of Disney Channel's original programming included You and Me Kid, Mousercise, and Welcome to Pooh Corner. What's Stevie Thinking? Towards the end of Lizzie McGuire, Lizzie's friend Miranda was nowhere to be seen. 
In the show, it was told that she had gone on a vacation with her family. However, in reality, actress Lelaine was working on a spin-off series titled What's Stevie Thinking? The show would have followed Miranda, her sister Stevie, and her family working at a zoo in Australia. The show almost made it to air and a pilot was shot, however never aired. Selena Gomez was even set to make her Disney Channel debut as the lead, Stevie, long before her debut on Wizards of Waverly Place. Westcott Westcott was the planned second gate of Disneyland before California Adventure was built. The park was supposedly going to be a replica of Epcot at Disney World for the West. However, after the failure of Euro Disneyland, many Disney projects were canceled, and unfortunately, Westcott was one of them. Disney's California Adventure ended up being built in 2001 on the land that Westcott was supposed to be. Disney's America Disney's America was going to be a Disney America themed park. Let me say that again. Disney's America was going to be a Disney America themed park in Haymarket, Virginia, only five miles away from the Manassas battlefield. The park was initially very popular with the locals and even the former governor's outgoing Lawrence Wilder and incoming governor George Allen. However, after many surveys came out about how Disney's park would negatively affect the area, public opinion swung the opposite direction, and Disney was basically bullied out of Virginia. This, coupled with the troubles with Euro Disneyland, were the final nails in the coffin for the project. Disney Quest Disney Quest was a chain of indoor interactive theme parks that was first built in downtown Disney in Buena Vista in 1998 as a part of Disney's regional entertainment. The buildings were a combination of interactive games and attractions similar to an arcade. A second one was built in Chicago, Illinois in 1999, but closed only after two years in 2001 due to low attendance. The Chicago location was heavily criticized for being cheap and out of place. Another location was planned for Philadelphia, but was canceled after the failure of the Chicago location. The Florida location remained open up until 2017 after the closing date was pushed back from 2016 to 2017. The building was demolished for the NBA experience until that closed in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and has not reopened since. Mouser Size Mouser Size was a 1982 music album for children that was released to very stellar reviews. Mouser Size was one of the original programs on the Disney Channel when it launched in April of 1983. The show featured Kellen Plachart teaching children at home about health and exercising. The show ran until 1996 when Disney Channel transitioned to basic cable. Walt's Field Day This was a party that was held by Walt Disney and his animators in 1938 after the completion of Disney's first animated feature film, Snow White. The party was held at the Norconian Hotel in California. The party was known for being really wild and including a lot of drunken shenanigans. Club Disney Club Disney was a chain of Chuck E. Cheese-esque buildings that would be arcades that would also host birthday parties. These were spawned after the success of the aforementioned Chuck E. Cheese chain and the rivaling Discovery Zone chains. Five locations were constructed with plans to expand more, but by 1999, all locations were closed due to not turning a profit. Superstar Limo Superstar Limo was an opening day attraction at California Adventure. The ride was a slow-moving dark ride that took guests through basically a pop-up book of celebrities that Disney had likeness rights to. The ride was heavily panned by both critics and the public for its cheapness and tackiness. The ride was closed for a little over a year after it opened and sat abandoned for a few years. Originally, the ride was going to be a thrill ride similar to Rock and Roller Coaster. However, supposedly, the death of Princess Diana of Wales caused the ride to be retooled into what it became. After the ride closed, several ideas bounced around the company into what the ride would become. One of these included Goofy's Superstar Limo, which was the same ride but with Disney characters instead of the celebrities. Another idea was to keep the ride as was, but to slowly change the ride including Muppet characters, who would comment on how bad the ride was. The end result would be Miss Piggy's Superstar Limo. The ride eventually ended up becoming Monsters Inc. Mike and Sully to the Rescue, which is its current holder. Captain Neo Captain Neo was an attraction that was in Disney World's Tomorrowland. 
The attraction was a 4D film that starred Michael Jackson and cost roughly $23.7 million to produce. The film was also written by Star Wars creator George Lucas. The film was shown in an attraction of the same name, which showcased 4D technology. The attraction was also cloned to several other parks like Disneyland Paris and Tokyo Disney. Carousel of Progress The Carousel of Progress is an attraction at the Magic Kingdom in Disney World. The attraction was cloned from Disneyland after that ride was closed in 1973 and was replaced by American Sings. The ride takes viewers through different points in the future. America Sings America Sings was an attraction that ran from 1974 to 1988 at Disney's Tomorrowland. The attraction was about America's different periods in musical history. Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color This was an anthology series that started in 1961 and ended in 1969 on NBC. The show featured theatrical cartoons, live action content, and informational pieces. The show ran for 200 episodes before it ended. Remix Remix was a series of musical shorts that were a part of Disney Channel's Have a Laugh series that usually aired after movies. Remix were a compilation of Disney shorts set to music. Some of these include Queen's Another One Bites the Dust, Jesse J's Price Tag, and Far East Movement's Rocketeer. Imagination Movers The Imagination Movers are a children's ska band that formed in 2003. The band consists of drummer Rich Collins, lead singer Scott Durbin, bassist David Posh, and guitarist Scott Smitty Smith. The band had their own TV show that ran for three seasons from 2008 to 2013 on Playhouse Disney. Surprisingly, at least to me, the band is still going on, having released their most recent project, Happy to Be Here, in 2021 through their band camp, and they continue to tour to this day. Doodle Bops the Doodle Bobs was a live action children's show that ran for three seasons from 2005 to 2007 on Playhouse Disney. The show consisted of Dee Dee, portrayed by Lisa Lennox, Rooney, portrayed by Chad McNamara, and Moe, portrayed by Jonathan Wexler, and their band, The Doodle Bobs. The series surrounded the three getting into different comedic situations and performing at concerts. In 2009, after the series ended, The Doodle Bobs toured Canada in their Together Forever tour. Rescuers Nude Woman In January of 1999, keen eyes of Disney fans noticed that in the VHS release of The Rescuers, there is a split-second scene of a nude woman in a window. The scandal prompted Disney to recall 3.4 million tapes. The film was reissued in March with the image blocked out. River Country River Country was a water park that opened in 1976. The park was located on the shores of Bay Lake near Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. River Country was closed after the 2001 season and was expected to reopen in 2002. After four years, Disney announced that it would never reopen. The park sat abandoned and in limbo for 17 years, becoming one of the most popular facets of Disney culture, with many urban explorers venturing to the abandoned Disney water park. The park was eventually demolished in 2019 with plans for a new hotel to be built. However, surprisingly, that project was halted and the status of it is unknown. 1940s Animator Strike In 1941, Disney animators organized a strike to get unionized. The strike came after animators saw that the working conditions were not up to par for them. Disney responded by firing a lot of animators, but was eventually pressured to recognize the recently formed Screen Cartoonist Guild, which was formed in 1938. Black Sunday Black Sunday refers to July 17, 1955, the opening day of Disneyland. The park was heavily overcrowded, and many things went wrong, including people jumping over the fences to get into the park, not enough seating, not enough shade, certain food places running out of supplies, rides not working, and many, many more. Alice Comedies This was a series of 57 shorts created from 1923 to 1927 and were live action and animation hybrids, which was very innovative for its time. The shorts were created by Disney and starred a girl named Alice and a cat named Julius. 
who bears a striking resemblance to a certain other animated cat, American Dog. American Dog was going to be a CGI film that followed a talking dog in his journey across America. The film was met with skepticism from John Lasseter and other Disney executives for being darker than usual. Director Chris Sanders was upset with how Disney was handling his film and ended up leaving for DreamWorks. The film was handed over to Chris Williams and Byron Howard and was reworked into Bolt. Shake It Up Anorexia Joke The seventh episode of season one of Shake It Up was pulled from airing after a scandal took place surrounding a joke about anorexia. The joke was a guest at a party telling Rocky and Cece that, quote, I could just eat you guys up. Well, if I ate followed by a laugh track. The episode aired in December of 2010, but was pulled in December of 2011 after Sony with a chance star, Demi Lovato, who had dealt with her own eating disorder, took to Twitter to voice her distaste with the episode and was promptly pulled, but was re-aired in 2012 with the scene removed. Nightmare Ned Nightmare Ned was a series that aired on ABC and ran from April to July of 1997. The series was based off of a computer game of the same name. The show follows Ned Needlemeyer as he confronts versions of his real-life anxieties in his dreams. The show was cancelled after only 12 episodes, as it ran over budget and was never given a chance to find its footing. The series was lost for a long time, however, all 12 episodes can be found online. Snow White's Adventures Original Ride The original Snow White's Adventures ride was too scary for children. For one, the ride never actually featured Snow White and more so featured the Evil Queen over a half dozen times. The ride was eventually retooled for a younger audience. Club 33 Club 33 is an exclusive Disney club that inhabits the several Disney parks. The club is notorious for being extremely exclusive to everyone except the rich. Reportedly, it costs around $60,000 to $70,000 for initiation and $20,000 annually. The Search for Mickey Mouse The Search for Mickey Mouse was a cancelled 2002 animated film in which Mickey gets mouse-napped and Minnie hires Basil from Baker Street from The Great Mouse Detective to find Mickey. The gang was supposed to encounter one character from every Disney film released up to that point. In 2005, it was rumored by WDW Radio that the film was going to be released in 2012 as Disney's 50th animated film. However, Tangled was released in 2010, which was Disney's 50th animated film. According to the Jim Hill Media blog, Disney had confirmed that the film was cancelled all the way back in 2002 and was replaced by The Three Musketeers. No footage, screenshots, audio, or any production material of the film has surfaced. Inside Out Bing Bong Death the original scene for Bing Bong's death in Inside Out was supposedly cut for being too dark for audiences. According to Bing Bong's voice actor, Richard Kind, the series was 40 seconds to a minute longer and the audience could hear Bing Bong pleading more. The consensus in Pixar was that the scene should be cut. Part of test footage of the scene was leaked but nothing else has come of it. McDonald's Collaboration during the 1990s, Disney and McDonald's came to an agreement that gave McDonald's the right to use Disney characters for the Happy Meal toys and allowed McDonald's restaurants into Disney parks. This agreement ended in 2006, with the McDonald's restaurants being removed and the Happy Meal tours promotions ending. However, a new Happy Meal toy agreement was reached in 2018 that continues to this day. Toon News Toon News was a series of interstitials that ran on Toon Disney from 2004 to 2005. The series followed Smokey Silvers, a cowboy robot newsreader who read news as he flew a blimp over Toontown. No, not that Toontown. The series was good enough to be nominated for a BAFTA award in 2005. However, the series is about half lost. Most of season one is available, however, most of season two is lost. Disney V Smile Games Disney had several games for the V-Smile educational console, including Toy Story 2, Operation Rescue Woody, Aladdin's Wonders of the World, Cars, and Winnie the Pooh the Honey Hunt. Epcot The experimental prototype community of tomorrow was the original concept for Epcot. The project, conjured up by Walt Disney himself towards the end of his life, was going to be a fully functional planned community set with houses, businesses for work, and highways and freeways. 
Watt worked on it up until the day he died on December 15, 1966. The company ended up abandoning the project, not knowing how to continue the project after the death of Walt. Epcot ended up being the second gate to Disney World in 1982. Suicide This is a creepypasta about a lost Mickey Mouse cartoon. The short starts out with Mickey walking through a town as it gets more and more dilapidated. The short then ends for a while before it starts back up with it becoming more disturbing. The ending shows a series of Russian text that translates to, The Sight of Hell Brings Its Viewers Back In. A security guard who watched the short tells the author that real suffering is not known before shooting himself. Discovery Island Discovery Island was an island opened in 1974 off the coast of Bay Lake. The area was developed for visitors to learn about different animals on the island. However, the island was closed in 1999 due to low attendance and high maintenance costs, and all the animals were relocated to the Animal Kingdom. The island has sat abandoned since then, with some brave explorers traveling to the island to photograph the eerie abandoned Disney Island. Room Zero Room Zero is a creepypasta about an abandoned bomb bunker underneath Disney World and surrounds the existence of characters known as Gascots. Gascots are figures with Disney gas masks over their faces. The story was written by Slime Beast and acts as a sequel to the Abandoned by Disney story. Jesse Gluten Controversy The 20th episode of Season 2 of the Disney Channel sitcom Jesse Quitting Cold Koala featured jokes referring to the character of Stuart Wharton and his gluten intolerance. The episode was pulled from broadcasting with all the jokes being removed. Welcome to Pooh Corner Touching Song In 1985, the Disney Channel aired a 41 minute long special titled Too Smart for Strangers, featuring the characters of the Welcome to Pooh Corner series. The special focused on the topic of stranger danger and taught kids how to tell a predator no. Featured in this special were several songs that taught children the concept of telling adults no if they were attempt to illegally touch them. Mr. One Way Mr. One Way is a ghost that supposedly haunts the Space Mountain ride. He is described as a tall reddish haired man who is generally nice, who will board the ride but will disappear by the time the ride is over. The legend goes that this man died on the ride back in the 1970s. Dreamfinders Dreamfinders was a supposed lost show from the initial Disney Channel launch. The show was based off of the Journey into Imagination ride at Epcot and was supposedly about a group of children who could solve real world problems by using their dreams. No video, images, or audio is available and only a promotional image was available for a long time, giving credit to this perhaps existing at some point and even a promo surfaced in late 2022. However, it was confirmed by Chief Archivist David Smith that the show was never produced to begin with. Sing Me a Story with Bell Sing Me a Story with Bell was a series that ran in syndication between 1995 and 1997. The show centered around Belle from Beauty and the Beast now owning a bookshop in her village. The show was created in compliance with the educational information mandates passed by the FCC in 1990, mandating that networks had to air educational content throughout their programming. The show was supposedly overshadowed by another syndicated program, Timon and Pumbaa, and was canceled after 26 episodes. Although episodes have surfaced here and there, seven of them are still lost. Disney Catacombs Disney Catacombs is a creepypasta surrounding a group of urban explorers who sneak into Disney after hours and get caught and sent down to the Disney Catacombs. While down there, they meet a group of disfigured costume characters and they escape from Disney after running out of the catacombs. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride Protests in 1997, Disney World announced that they would close their Mr. Toad's Wild Ride attraction in favor of a Winnie the Pooh ride. Over the course of the next few months, protesters would flock to the Magic Kingdom to protest the closure of the ride. Their efforts would ultimately be in vain as the ride closed in September of 1998 and was replaced by its current holder, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which opened in June of 1999. 
Yippee Day. On August 6, 1970, 300 counterculture protesters took to Disneyland to protest the ongoing Vietnam War. They were mostly peaceful, albeit annoying, committing menial vandalism and smoking marijuana and taking acid. However, what the event is most known for is when the Yippies ended up hijacking Tom Sawyer's island. All in all, 20 were arrested and the event has faded into a Disney urban legend. Deborah Stone On July 8, 1974, just eight days after the American Sing attraction opened, 18-year-old cast member Deborah Stone was working as a hostess of the attraction. At around 10.35 p.m., the seating area rotated. How the attraction was set up was that the seating area rotated around a stationary stage that would cycle through different scenes of the attraction. Deborah got too close to where the wall rotated and she was crushed between the walls. Guests were rushed out of the theaters, but by then it was already too late. The attraction was closed for renovations, now adding an emergency light to let cast members know when the ride was moving and installing breakaway walls in case someone were to get stuck again. The Black Friday Incident The Black Friday Incident is a creepypasta based off of Toy Story. Despite it being a creepypasta, the story actually has some truth to it. The story goes that during the production of Toy Story, Disney wanted the film to be geared towards an older audience. Every time that Pixar would work on the reel, Disney would send it back asking for quote unquote more edge. This resulted in the Black Friday reel, which was made by an animator named Ralph. The reel is extremely disturbing and almost leads to the film getting cancelled. They go to check on Ralph, but by then, he was already dead from a heart attack. The story itself isn't true, but the reel is, well, real, at least not as dramatized. The storyboard is about 3 minutes long, complete with voice acting and sound effects. This version portrays Woody as more of a jerk, but thankfully, Disney didn't like this version and ended up not going through with it. Alien Encounter Original Concept Originally, the extraterrestrial alien encounter attraction was going to be based off of Ridley Scott's 1979 film, Alien. This was thought of by then CEO Michael Eisner, as he wanted rides that were geared towards older audiences. Ultimately, this concept never went through and Alien Encounter eventually turned into Stitch's Great Escape. Subliminal Messages Supposedly, Disney uses subliminal messages in their films. Several examples include the priest getting a little too excited in The Little Mermaid, the box cover for that movie having a little extra on it, and The Lion King having the word sex in it. And as I talked about earlier, the rescuers including an image of a nude woman. Lemming Killings In 1958, Disney released a nature documentary titled White Wilderness. During a scene where a group of lemmings jump off a cliff, it was theorized that the lemmings did not jump off willingly, rather were pushed off the cliff. Why would Disney do this, if true, is yet to be known. Mickey Mouse in Vietnam Short Subject, also known as Mickey Mouse in Vietnam, is a one minute long short of Mickey joining the army and then going to Vietnam before dying while in battle. The film was made by Milton Glasser and Whitney Savage, father of Mythbusters Adam Savage, as part of the Angry Arts Festival, a Vietnam War protest event. The film was largely forgotten and shattered in obscurity until 2013 when YouTuber Abad Higgins uploaded the short. In a later interview, he claimed he found the film in a bin that was marked for destruction, most likely saving the film from complete destruction. Diffuser's Face Diffuser's Face is a 1943 US propaganda film created by Disney. During World War II, Disney found it to be more profitable and patriotic to instead of creating films for theaters that he would create propaganda films criticizing Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. This one, released in 1943, stars Donald Duck in a nightmare scenario working in Nazi Germany. No female animators allowed. During the early years of Disney's history, females were only allowed to work in the ink and paint department, which oversaw coloring the cells. This changed in 1941 when Disney allowed women to start training in animation. Spider-Man on Child's Grave 
In 2019, Disney infamously disallowed a father from putting an image of Spider-Man on his child's grave. Ollie Jones, a massive Spider-Man fan from England, had passed away from leukodystrophy, a disease that attacked the central nervous system of the brain. His father, Lloyd, had asked the local council permission to put the character on the gravestone, to which he was referred to Disney. Disney rejected the grieving father's wish, saying, quote, we follow a policy that began with Walt Disney himself that does not permit the use of characters on headstones, cemetery, or other memorial markers or funeral urns. Abandoned by Disney Abandoned by Disney is a creepypasta, a prequel to the aforementioned Room Zero, which details the story of the author's journey to an abandoned place called Mowgli's Palace, based on the character from the Jungle Book. The place was, dare I say, abandoned by Disney, with no explanation. So the author journeys to the place and finds creepy things there, like writings on the wall saying abandoned by God. But the real turn is when the author gets to a room labeled mascots only. He finds a room full of Disney mascot suits and a lone Mickey Mouse suit lying on its back. It proceeds to stand up and remove its head, oozing out yellowish slime. It's a small world suicide. This refers to an image that was supposedly taken inside of the It's a Small World attraction. The story goes that this is from a 1999 trip to Disney in which It's a Small World had to be evacuated for an unknown reason. And a mother decided to waste the rest of her disposable camera and this was one of the pictures she captured. Spreading Ashes People sometimes take ashes of their deceased ones to spread them at Disney. This happens so often that they have the white powder alert code for when a guest has brought ashes to spread. The most common spot to spread is the haunted mansion. Allegedly, the mansion is haunted by the spirits who have been spread there. Brian Peck Brian Peck was an actor who worked on several children's shows, including Disney Channel's Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. In 2003, he was arrested for lewd acts upon a minor and oral copulation. He was released and went back to working on shows, although not as many children's shows. Original Haunted Mansion There was an urban legend stating that the original Haunted Mansion attraction frightened a man to death. After this, Disney retooled the ride into what it is today. There have also been art and schematics released showing certain effects that were taken out of the ride, such as the infamous Hatbox Ghost, which apparently never worked, so he was removed. Eventually, Disney did put him back in. The other effect that I want to touch on is the man in the web, which was a man in a web. No footage or images of him exist and has fallen into being an urban legend. The body was supposedly used to scare cast members at some point before being lost. However, some evidence of him being included in the ride exists, as you can hear him in the original 1971 ride audio. But there's room for a thousand. Any volunteers? Hmm? If you should decide to join us, final arrangements may be made at the end of the tour. Pluto Chase's Child This refers to an old YouTube video that was uploaded in 2009 by user Lou Kim Tricks, which shows a Pluto costume character chasing a child. The child runs from him until he is confronted by a parent, either his mother or a bystander, and he immediately goes back into character and denying himself from the situation. Not a lot of information about this incident is known. No articles, no separate accounts, no lawsuits, only the video. It is unknown what the context is altogether. A lot of people are under the consensus that the child pulled on his tail. Tigger Trial in 2004, Michael Chartrand, who was portraying the character of Tigger, was arrested and accused of molesting a 13-year-old girl. However, Disney's legal team was able to defend him and get him acquitted, arguing that the costume limited the sight and movement of Chartrand. They even brought the costume into the courtroom, where attorney Jeff Kaufman put the costume on and showed the jury how it worked. Laughograms 
Life at Graham Studios was the first studio that was founded by Walt Disney and partner of iWorks. The studio was founded in Kansas City, Missouri in 1921. However, the studio failed and went defunct in 1923. Mickey's Best Friend Mickey's Best Friend is a creepypasta that tells the story of an old story that gives the backstory to Pluto. The story goes that Mickey befriended a character named Eustace, a character similar to Goofy, and that Mickey operated on him into his own dog, Pluto. Mickey Gas Mask During World War II, Disney created gas masks that looked like Disney characters, most notably Mickey Mouse, to make them more appealing to children in the event of a gas attack. Javier Cruz in 2004, 38-year-old Javier Cruz, portraying the character of Pluto, was hit and killed by a parade float on its way to Main Street. Allegedly, he had tripped in front of the float and did not have enough time to move out of the way. Alan Ferris On October 14, 1992, 37-year-old Alan Ferris, the ex-boyfriend of a Disney employee, took two guards hostage in an Epcot bathroom. Shortly after police surrounded the restroom, he released the guards before coming out. He pleaded with the police to kill him before he turned his shotgun on himself. Handy Manny Hijack In January of 2015, Comcast viewers in Middletown, New Jersey were watching Handy Manny on Disney Junior. However, at around 9.30 a.m., the broadcast was interrupted and viewers were subjected to hardcore pornography. The culprit or culprits were never caught. Nara Dreamland. In the late 1970s, Disney was interested in building a theme park in Japan, so they contracted the Oriental Land Company to build a park in Nara, Japan. However, after the deal fell apart, Disney decided to build a park in Tokyo rather than Nara. Since the park was near completion, the park was completed and given the name Nara Dreamland. The park opened in 1961 and was immensely popular. However, after Tokyo Disneyland opened in 1983, the park's attendance tanked. Along with Tokyo Disney Sea and Universal Japan opening in 2001, the fate was sealed for the fledgling park. The park trudged along until August 31, 2006, when the park ran its final day of operation. Allegedly, in the middle of the day, it began to rain and everyone went home. The park remained abandoned for the next 10 years until demolition was started in October of 2016 and was completed in December of 2017. As of October of 2022, the land remains undeveloped. Thomas Cleveland In 1966, 19-year-old Thomas Cleveland was struck and killed by a monorail while trying to sneak into Disneyland. He had ignored shouts from the security guards and was killed instantly. Disney buys land in Texas from 2006 to 2010, a man named Thomas Lucas conned millions of dollars from community members and investors saying that he had insider knowledge that Disney had bought land in Texas and was planning to build a park there. Now, of course, Disney never bought land in Texas and Disney, as I know, doesn't have any plans to build in Texas. Alien Encounter Documentary in 1995, advertising the new Alien Encounter attraction, Disney made a documentary named Alien Encounters from New Tomorrowland. The documentary paints aliens and UFOs as real things and takes the concept of extraterrestrials as fact, not fiction. Laughlets Laughlets is a series of 30-second shorts created sometime between Laughograms and Alice comedies. There are no screenshots, audio, or video that exist at the shorts only the names of them. Currently, there are eight shorts that are believed to exist. Donald Duck Ban in Finland This is an urban legend stating that Helsinki council member Matti Halopainen had proposed a banning of Donald Duck comics in Finland, causing him to lose the next election. The reason was that he wasn't wearing any pants. During his campaign, his opponent claimed that he was the man who banned Donald Duck from Helsinki. However, Donald Duck was never banned from the country. Uncle Walt 
Uncle Walt is an unofficial short film created by UCLA film student Robert Swarth. The film is a satire of Disney, painting some of the less favorable parts of the studio. A few of the scenes, including the female centaurs from Fantasia working as prostitutes in a red light district, with Goofy acting as the pimp, and the terrified reactions of children to some of Disney's more intense scenes like the witch's transformation in Snow White. The film has fallen into complete obscurity as it was only shown once at a UCLA film festival. Swarth has recently stated that he has no plans to release the film publicly. Mickey and Minnie Sex Tape This is an urban legend stating that there was a Mickey and Minnie sex tape. The story goes that two animators created the tape as a celebration of Walt Disney's birthday. He was excited about it and asked who made it. After the two revealed themselves, they were promptly fired and all known copies were destroyed. The only recounting of the story comes from an interview in a dubious biography of Walt Disney. Disney's The Story of Menstruation In 1946, Disney created a 10 minute long short film titled The Story of Menstruation. The short taught people, specifically young girls, about the menstruation cycle. Supposedly, the film was distributed to high schools along with a booklet that discouraged the use of tampons during a time when Tampax was dominating the industry. White Rabbits Can't Jump White Rabbits Can't Jump is the unaired 99th episode of the Adventures in Wonderland TV series. The episode surrounded White Rabbit being afraid he would lose an upcoming athletics competition. He ends up getting help from O.J. Simpson. The episode was pulled from airing after O.J. Simpson's 1994 arrest. The episode was adapted from a book of the same name. No one can die at Disneyland. This is a legend that after guests experience accidents, Disney will purposely move the body off property to prevent anyone from being declared dead on their grounds. This rumor is scrutinous as most injured people are declared dead at a hospital by a doctor. Disney's Secret Service Disney has a secret police force, sometimes referred to as suits, who dress up as regular patrons to prevent shoplifters and to de-escalate situations. Mickey in Blackface In the 1933 short Mickey's Melodrama, Mickey dresses up in blackface. The episode has been banned by Disney and has not been mentioned since. Three Weeks the 1930 short, The Shindig, was banned in America due to the opening scene in which a nude Clarabelle cow is reading a novel named Three Weeks, which is a real-life 1907 erotica novel written by Eleanor Glynn. Nikita Khrushchev denied entry. In 1959, the then leader of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, was denied entry to Disneyland due to U.S. national security concerns. Brain-Eating Amoeba in 1980, an 11-year-old contracted a brain-eating disease after visiting River Country. The theory states that this was one of the reasons that River Country closed in 2001. However, this has not been confirmed. Walt Disney Anti-Semitism A popular theory is that Walt Disney was an anti-Semite and a racist because of the stereotypical depictions in his cartoons. Most of this rumor comes from the 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s, when racism was unfortunately common in film and animation. One such example is the aforementioned Mickey's melodrama when Mickey dresses up in blackface. Mouse Wits This is a term that Disney cast members refer to Disneyland and Disney World to refer to how unhappy the cast members are to work there. Freemasonry it has been a long-standing legend that Walt Disney was a 33rd degree Freemason. The number 33 has a lot of meaning in Disney, most notably Club 33, a private invite-only restaurant. In Illuminati terminology, the number 33 is a power number like 11 and 12. 33 gives guidance to the world. The numbers 11, 22, and 33 represent the three corners of the Triangle of Enlightenment or Illumination. Walt Disney Death Film And now for the bottom of the iceberg. Supposedly, Walt Disney had produced a film for his employees after his death. The film was said to have given specific instructions to each employee, even going as far as addressing them by name and giving them special instructions on how to run the company for the next five years.
and that is the Disney iceberg. So that's all the um the, the iceberg trifecta is complete with the Cartoon Network, the Nickelodeon, and now the Disney iceberg. Um another long video. So but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um I might do more icebergs in the future, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um but anyway, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you later.